No, I kind of ran out of memes. I was trying to think about anything clever I can do for this opening, but I, I don't have anything. So this meme here best represents how we all feeling, probably. And yeah, here we go again. So first of all, thank you all for tuning in this morning. I literally woke up at 6 a.m. and started streaming because my phone, my phone blew up from the drama happened last night while I was sleeping. So there's a lot to uncover. And I basically started streaming for nine hours straight to go over all the drama as it was happening with all of my viewers. And thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you there. So I hope you guys catch my next stream. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and go to my Discord and go to the announcement channel and you can react your role in the announcement channel. So if you care about a new YouTube video notification, click on this. If you care about Wonderland, click on that, all right? So with that said, let's go over what happened in the past few hours. When I went to bed, apparently a giant atomic bomb dropped to the whole Wonderland or even the whole DeFi community. The bomb blew up and we are left with dead bodies everywhere. Yeah, dead frogs everywhere. This is not how I want to wake up to. So it's been like two days in a row, I woke up to stuff like this. And for those of you who wants a quick summary of what happened, this meme sums it up extremely well. But you can pause the screen if you want to read it, if you don't have time to make it through the video, but I am going to go through exactly what happened. Now, before we go through what happened, I like to inform you on something called a quadriga exchange. So the gist is that this guy here, along with one other person, founded the exchange called Quadriga in Canada. And it turns out that the whole exchange was siphoning people's fund, using people's fund to trade. And what happened was this guy, apparently the founder, went to India for his wedding with his wife right here. And then a few months before he went to the wedding, he left a will saying in case he dies, all the stuff belongs to his wife. So he went to India and then you know what? It turned out he died in India to a disease or something. So, and then he's the only person holding the key to the assets of the exchange worth over $150 million. That's all the customers fund from the exchange. And what's even weirder is that in India, it's very easy to get a death certificate and no one confirmed his dead body. No one confirmed it and he was cremated right away. Does that sound sketchy to you? Of course it does. In fact, there are document documentaries out there talking about this stuff. So. Why am I telling you about this story? About this sketchy dude who claimed he died and he only he has access to the wallet worth over $140 million. And all the people who invested in the exchange got screwed. They lost all of their money. So why am I telling you this story? I want you to be familiar with this story as I tell you what happened last night. So basically, a bombshell was dropped overnight about the identity of Sifu. We now know who Sifu is. We confirmed who Sifu is directly from Danny himself. Now, here's the thing. Let's read this tweet. This needs to be shared. Sifu is the co-founder of Quadriga Exchange. Remember the story I, found, I said here? I said he founded the exchange with one other person. Well, guess what? That other person is Sifu. Apparently, that's his name. Now, if you read further, this is actually his second name, but we'll go into that. So if you're unfamiliar, that is the Canadian exchange that collapsed in 2019 after the founder disappeared with $169 million of customer fund. And here's how, how it is. This, per this person, Zach, he found through the blockchain traces. I'll show you how, but he confirmed it with Daniel. He DM'd Daniel about it. All right, so he said, I came across something rather odd about that. And then Danny said about Dubai. Now, I don't know what he means by that. He's like, is, is there another thing that we should know about Dubai? Anyway, so he said about Sifu. 
Oh, he said or about Sifu. Okay, so Danny knows another. But aside from this whole Sifu thing, Danny knows something about Dubai right here. So he's like, oh, she, what's up? And then he straight up, he said, well, he's the Crusher guy. guy. And then Danny said, I cannot confirm, but I have thought about this a lot. <sighs> Man, Danny just pretty much confirmed it right here. So then this, this guy said, dangerous to be working with, sir. And then Danny said, but yeah, it's a problem with the PR at this point. Alex, my partner, told me, how are you going to manage this if it comes out? I don't have an answer. I can count on a single hand how many people know. We started this together without knowing. It's interesting, you know. I thought he was more careful. I have my ways. So obviously, Danny knows that Sifu is that Quadriga guy. The guy who ran a scam exchange. It was deemed a Ponzi by the Canadian government. Sifu was the co-founder of that exchange. And this guy was able to find out the how, how, who Sifu was through the blockchain because there was a transaction from the blockchain to Sifu wallet directly. This wallet here is aligned with the Quadriga exchange and people and they saw the fund that was supposed to be unmovable because the person with the key died. Somehow it was able to move through Sifu's wallet. It went straight to Sifu.east and this this address was labeled my co-patron personal ledger there it is this is the proof that Sifu is that guy and at this point in time if you're watching this video all the news happening out and it is confirmed it is confirmed so I feel like I don't know what to do I feel like he's a good man I spent a lot of time with him do you think I should just get him slowly out but yes it is my highest risk to my reputation this is what my PR security manager told me and then say you're willing to put your entire rep on the line and also risk everyone's money? Then he said he's not. Well, that's what you're doing. Good call out, guy. Good call out. So, yeah, that's it. This is the, the bombshell. This is the bombshell. I reported a lot of Danny Sifu, Danny <laughs> tweets because I was so mad on the stream. So you can watch the replay if you want. There's just so much more detail on the stream. So go watch that. Anyway, so what do we know so far? We know Sifu is the co-founder of that scammy exchange and they took all the money and that money was siphoned to Sifu's wallet. That's how Sifu got his money. And now apparently Danny knows who Sifu was. Danny claims that he knows Sifu a month ago. Only a month ago he knew who Sifu was and yet he kept it from all of us. He kept it from the Frog Nation. He kept it from everybody. Now that's the definition of withholding important information to your investors. You could go to jail for that. So Danny withheld that information. Knowingly, even like given a month ago, we were doing a vote on Snapshot to whether to decide to keep Sifu or not. And 99% of people voted for yes. That's because no one knew who Sifu was. Well, guess what? Now we know. And Danny knew. He knew it back then. And yet he still led us. He led us to this whole thing. Now, believe what you want about Sifu. I don't know. So he hasn't done anything so far. I don't think that gives us a sign that he's a scammer. He's going to rock all of us. But given the history of this scammer, apparently someone looked deeper into this Michael patron guy. That's not his real name. His real name is actually Omar. He started, com well, there's a thread, a whole thread about how Sifu, when he was 22, he committed a lot of identity fraud. He actually went to jail in the United States again, and he got deported out of the United States. He's now about 40 years old and he went to Canada. That's only three years ago. This whole thing was only three years ago. He went to Canada, started an exchange with this guy and then took all the customers fund. So that's the guy handling our treasury right now. Got it? This is what blew up this whole DeFi world right now. It blew up Wonderland. The price tanked after the news. There is no buyback at the moment. And I don't think there's exit liquidity right now on Sushi. Everything is frozen. So, what is happening? Danny issued a statement. Now, for those of you who were on my stream this morning, you saw how angry I was reading this crap right here. And I actually made a lot of edits to this, so it made more sense. But basically, what he said was, he found out about Sifu about a month ago, but he's willing to give second chances. There is no second chances. Sifu is a career scammer. He scammed time to time to time, multiple times, 
all his life, he all he's been doing is scamming people for money. How many chances do you have to give someone? In, at this point, it's inherent in their nature to scam people. I believe in second chances, but this is not a second chance. If you guys want to see the updated, I actually edited Danny's statement live on stream. So if you want to see my feeling about what Danny should have said, and I'll call out all the BS, go to this tweet on my Twitter. This is my edited version of this junk right here. So. So what is it? What is what's happening? Danny basically say, "Don't worry, the funds are safe. It's multi sig, and all the fuds needs to stop." This is not fud anymore. This is the truth anymore. Like Danny, this is the truth. It's not a fraud, like fud anymore. And speaking of fud, I lost my fud fighter status on Wonderland Discord. I totally lost it. So because I was live streaming and wasn't responsible, I sort of accidentally streamed a private room of Fall Fighters, and that was the whole reason I got my role revoked. So I'm now just a regular person, just like all of you on the Discord. I'm not getting banned yet. So thank you guys, like thank you to the mod who were very reasonable with me. I chatted with him. He's a uh, he's doing his job. So when I was doing stream, I was hoping to take some of those craziness in the Discord to my chat, so they don't have to deal with all of that craziness. So that's what happened. So now, Sifu came out with a statement after this whole thing. After Danny's statement, Sifu came out with a statement. What did he say? He said, good morning fam. I'm sure that many of you have been concerned about the recent attack in docks. I am taking precautions for my safety and have taken steps to ensure that there is no risk to Wonderland asset if anything happens to me. All assets are secured by multi-sig and as Danny mentioned in his statement, the FUD regarding this needs to end. I don't want anyone to feel like they were tricked or manipulated in any way, so I have decided to cease all treasury management activity until a vote regarding my future employment has concluded. As I've stated in numerous occasions, I work for you, my backers. If you no longer feel comfortable with me leading this app, and I have done since founding it only four months ago, I will not want to be here. I have enjoyed my time with all of you through both the good and bad times. I got to know many of you through my AMAs and very proud of the community which we have built. I fully expect this vote to not pass. So the vote is to keep Sifu. So he is he's expecting people to not keep him. Despite what Danny seems to think. As most of the world does not believe in judging people for who they are today. Yeah, I mean that's it's true. He doesn't think that so Danny believes in second chances, and most of the world does not believe in judging people who they are today. But dude, but Sifu, you rug people. Three years ago, how much can you change in three years? You started rugging people at 22 years old. It's like your whole life, your whole adult life, you've been rugging people. How many chances? Honestly, no one wants to see someone with this kind of thing handling our, our balance. I'm honestly very heartbroken to be leaving my fam on Wonderland and love you all. So there is a snapshot currently to keep or well, replace Sifu as a manager. I will post this link in the description and then you can go in there and vote. Totally go for it. So currently it's sitting at 81% to replace Sifu and only 18% to keep him. Most of the whales are willing to replace Sifu. So that is the status. You can go and vote if you can just voice your opinion. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. I've, I've been streaming nine hours for all of this. There's so much coming out. So what's going on now is that, so what Sifu did was his wallet started the day at $400 million throughout the day. Now I saw he transferred $70 million to the treasury live on stream. He transferred 70 million to the treasury live on stream. Now people might be like, oh, if he's a scammer, why would he not do, why would he transfer 70 million to the treasury? Well, if you can transfer enough to convince people that you're not a scammer, then you can walk still walk away with 69, 69 million dollars is a lot of money. He have he have he has half a billion dollars in his account at the beginning of the day. So he's been transferring stuff out this whole time, just trying to see like where does it if it, it, I don't even know what happened. So we will continue to watch this wallet in the next few sessions of live when I stream, but. Yeah, by the way, I called in sick, well, called call in sick for work today, just so I can show you guys, like, go do this craziness with you. That's how I stream for nine hours. Now, let's look at Danny's Twitter. Now, people are all dumping Danny's projects. Abra, Popsicle, Finance. Like, oh, you know, even Andre took, took out Danny's 
picture in his wallpaper. Wow, Danny changed his wallpaper too. So apparently Andre and Danny are no longer, probably no, no longer on good grounds. So what's happening now is Danny said he's got death threats. I am not a supporter of death threats, for sure. So there's a new proposal right now coming out. He said, tomorrow we will add a proposal to give back all the funds at treasury value or continue buyback and add new management. So now we have the ability to choose what to do next after this whole craziness. And at the moment, people are scared that the pegging or this magic internet money pegging, it's going to go away. They're going to be scared that it won't be worth a dollar anymore. So there's a lot of volatility right now in this blockchain, in this whole thing, because of this whole drama. It's totally nuts. And people are looking into Danny now to see his past. How did he get the money? There are rumors that the co-founder of Abra is actually the CFO of Bitfinex, a pretty sketchy exchange who's behind Tether. And they're saying that's how Danny got his money. So again, I don't, we don't have proof of any of this, but we know for sure that Sifu is, is this guy because that, those are their articles on Cointelegraph, their articles on Coindesk, on Bloomberg, on Yahoo. It's hitting mainstream. Sifu is on mainstream media now with his picture plastered all over the internet. So if you do a search for his name, you're going to see a ton of articles on it. You're going to see his picture, you're going to see his name, like all of that stuff. This is Sifu apparently, that's him. So all that stuff, it, it's, yeah, there it is. There's all of that stuff. That's Sifu when he was 22 probably. So that's the news. That's the breakdown of the news happened so far. I am very disappointed at the turn of the events. I am very disappointed that Danny withheld that information from all of us. And if you tuned into my stream, I was pretty pissed. So again, please take your time to digest all of this information, read about it, and decide what to do next. And as always, I will be here with all the information to provide to you guys. And I hope you guys are doing well. So with that said, make sure to tune in on my next live. And I hope you have a nice evening.